Thank you, guys. It's a, it's a huge hall. We are not so many, so it can be a bit more intimate. So I was thinking, before we start, I have quite a few slides. Before going through the slides, I want to invite you, if it becomes too boring, to raise your hands. So if you can do just a brief start, raise your hands. Fantastic. Thank you. So that's the rule. So I'm going to show you a bit our view about multiplayer games. Uh, it's our strategy in the market on uh, basically how we launch games on Facebook, what the next step is for us of launching the games also on mobile. We've had quite some, quite some success, I think, on Facebook. And so I'm showing a bit where we are and also how we see the world. So the first step is I believe there are three major platforms which are changing the way how people are playing games today and therefore are changing the expectation from a user perspective of what the game has to provide to be fun. And each platform has an influence on how games are played or how uh, people expect games to be played. And each platform has an influence, but all, of, all three of them are happening to uh, be uh, growing at the same time. And games have not actually absorbed all, this, all, all these different inputs at the same time. So the first platform is, as you know, of course, Facebook. Facebook has now more than 100 million users. About 230 million of them are playing every month. And so the first influence, you would, of course, expect a game on Facebook to be a game which is social, i.e. played with your friends. Secondly, it's not thinkable anymore to launch a game on Facebook as a paid game, where you have to pay first before you can access the game. It seems strange, but this was actually the reality just a few years ago, where downloads, you had to pay first nine euros or nine dollars, later the price went down to 0 0.99, but you first had a door in front of you. So people who are playing on Facebook expect not to pay to access your game. Second change uh, is smartphone. So last year, there were more smartphones sold than babies born worldwide. There were about 500 million smartphones which were sold last year. There was a second point in common with babies. So when you play on a, when you have a baby, how many of you have a baby? Sorry, first of all. Great. So you know, I guess, that when you have a baby, it's very difficult actually to plan how much time you have. You put him asleep now, but maybe five minutes later, he's awake again. So now imagine you're a mom, you're at home, and you are playing your game. Uh, you don't know exactly how much time you have, but you still want to have fun. So it's very similar, actually, on the phone, where you are in the tube or you are on your way. You want to have fun in your retail space of time. So next, the third key criteria, therefore, I believe, is it has to be snackable. It must be consumable over a short period of time, and over a short period of time, you must have fun playing the game. Third platform is tablets. So what is a tablet? Is it a mobile device or is it a non-mobile device? It's actually a mix of both because actually many people play or use a tablet at home. It's substituting, uh, in many cases, the usage of a PC. Uh, I think that the impact, negative impact on PCs has been around 25%. And this year, the, the expectation is that there will be a, an install base of around 200 million tablets worldwide and it's going to grow next year to double to 400 million, and there are about 2 billion uh, PCs installed. So it's around 20% of the install base by the end of next year. So it's quite a big install base, if, especially if you consider that it's not like eating a chicken where uh, it's, it's, it's often like, like, like when you eat a chicken, and some person, a person eats a chicken, another one eats none, so the average is half. The same is also here. Uh, many of these people actually are playing in the US and more developed countries. So there's a very big average of people using a tablet. And the key thing, is going, I believe, is going to be that when you stop uh, on your computer and you continue on your tablet, you want to have a seamless experience. So the differentiation, the, the, the difference between mobile and non-mobile, I think, is going to disappear. And this is going to have an impact, I believe, on how people want to play games. And we had a question in this morning at, the, at one of the panels uh, with some, some of our players. And they said that they, they want to have a connected, fully synchronized experience. So this is why multiplayer games are really, multi-platform games are important. So I'm going to talk to you about those four key criteria. 
And I believe that what we are doing, most, most companies here are developing casual games. I think we have a, a genre of games which fits perfectly these four criteria. And key reasons are that casual games are snackable. They can be played over a short period of time. Number two, also, they fit very well every screen device. And so as you always have to uh, conform first to the lowest common denominator, which is the smartphone screen device. So stop with the generics. You all know what I said before. But I think it's interesting to present to you what we have been doing with this basically so far and what is the plan going forward on how we want to incorporate this in the product. And I'll show you quite a few product slides. Many of those are shown for the first time because we're going to release the first mobile game very soon. Uh, and these are the first pictures. So the launch strategy we have is one which applies to us. Some companies may have a different launch strategy, but this has been working quite well for us so far. So we've started the company back in 2003. We started the company on the web. So we developed around 80 new games every, 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 every year, a portfolio of around 150 games. And we then launched our first Facebook game only in April of last year. And and so I want to talk to you first of all about this first experience of how we did this. So the games you play on, uh, on King.com on the web are uh, games which you play in tournament. So you play the game up here, which is Bubble Witch, uh, in a tournament fashion. So the game lasts around three minutes. And the highest score between you and another person which has been matched with you according to his skill basically wins. That's the model. What we have done, the game was very popular, it was going really well on King.com, so we brought this game to Facebook. And what we did for bringing this game to Facebook was to add to the game, to this proven game, the Saga framework. And the Saga framework basically encompasses a few things. First of all, you have, we integrated in the framework all the Facebook features, all the common features you know, so from the login to uh, uh, you can see your friends, you can invite your friends, you can post, friends can see what you are doing, the scores you have achieved, etc., etc. But we've made it more fun by adding context. So you play the same game you see before, but you play it in a progression where you move from level to level, and we have more than 200 levels on Bubble Witch Saga, by accomplishing a minimum score. And when you get the minimum score, you can move to the next level, and you can see your friends positioned on, on this landscape. So it's more fun than playing the game by yourself, uh, just based on points, because here you can see where you are, you can, you can see progress. And it's not time-based, so you can take all the time you want in the world to actually uh, finish your game. The third component of what we did, and is also embedded in this Saga framework, which is actually more than a framework, it's actually a platform, was to add a business model, monetization, based on, uh, on this progression. So you get five lives to complete your journey. Every time you don't achieve the minimum score, which allows you to progress to the next level, uh, you lose one life. After you lost five lives, you have the following options. You can wait and come back tomorrow, you get new lives. You can invite your friends, you get new lives. You can watch a video ad, you get new lives. Or you can play immediately by buying five new lives. You can also buy unlimited new lives, which is considerably more expensive. And by doing so, uh, let me see, sorry, by doing so, sorry, th this was the first part. Then the difference also to versus what we did before was not just to launch the game. On King.com, we launch the game and that's it. On Facebook, we launch the game and then we start optimizing on the game. So the, I'll show you here some examples of optimization we did. This is the cemetery. Uh, levels from 6 to 15. So in the cemetery, we saw that we had a problem. At level 9, we had 28% of the players who reached level 9, but then got stuck. And then we had only 4% of the players who reached level 10. And therefore, at level 14, we only had 3% of the players. We wanted to, and we had more than 200 levels. So what did we do? We checked. What was the problem at level 9? Level 9 was a fun level. However, the score to be achieved at this level was actually very high. 
you can see here the score, and we, you know, by playing the game, you had to complete the whole, you had to be up here to, to finish, but it was quite tough. So the easiest solution, you know, just normal thinking, is we reduced the target minimum level to achieve to pass the level. What was the consequence? The consequence was actually very positive. We saw that at level 14, we had now 31% of players instead of 3%. Now, this is a very small example of optimization post-launch. So having done all of these things, uh, we repeated the exercise for a few more games. So we now have six, uh, six games launched on Facebook. And we launched the first, the first game, Bubble Saga, sorry, yeah, Bubble Saga in April of last year. And we are now at around 12 million DAUs. And we're now number two on Facebook. So it has been a very positive development for the company. It changed the shift, it shifted also the, the focus of the company, meaning that we moved the, the funnel from the web now to Facebook, which is now, which is now the largest traffic acquisition for, for us. All very exciting. The other exciting part is that we have now two games among the top 10 on, on Canvas on Facebook. So we have Bubble Witch Saga and we have Candy Crush Saga, which only launched three months ago. So, and then and all the other games are, most of the other games actually are above one million DAU. So I think this is very encouraging for all of us here, say, meaning that this is something which is possible. So it's not game over on Facebook. Now I would like to talk about the next step. So, so far it has been super exciting and we are just at the beginning of our, of our uh, venture on Facebook by launching more and more games from our portfolio. But the other exciting part in front of us is actually mobile. And I'm going to show you now something which I haven't shown uh, to anyone yet, and it's what we are doing on mobile. So the, before I start showing you some more detailed slides on the product, the key challenge on mobile is discoverability. So there are more than 500,000 apps on the iOS store. This one is a real picture from the San Diego Marathon. And chance is that the San Diego Marathon actually also has around 500,000 runners every year. So now imagine you are one of these runners. So where are you? Hoppla, sorry, went too far. You're now one of these runners. So if you are somewhere here, or even if you are here and you're really good because you are just here, it's actually, it's actually not enough. Because you have to be one of these guys here. You have to be one of the 10 here. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. If you're not one of those, actually, it's irrelevant. Because so far, unless you are in the top 10 on the iOS store, you will not be picked up. So it's quite tough, actually, to, to get through to the top 10. And that's why traffic always goes to the, to the winner, and the winner takes it all. And the alternative to that is to focus on advertising, and it's actually pretty expensive if you want to buy your way in. So what are we doing in, in, in this context? Because we want to be a winner also on mobile. And we want to win on mobile. So in, an interesting consideration here is, again, Facebook. So around fa the Facebook app is the most frequently downloaded uh, free app on, uh, on in, this, in the App Store, both on, uh, on iOS and on Android. And it's actually pretty relevant. And uh, Facebook has around, uh, I think, 50%, five, around 500 million uh, users who actually are accessing Facebook on their mobile. So why is this relevant? This is pretty relevant because Facebook allows you to play a multi-platform game because there is no more distinction between PC or mobile. And this is, a, this is, a, this is for example, an example of how this could play out. So I am playing my game on, on my computer using Facebook, on Facebook. I send a request and invite, for example, to a friend, as you saw before, I finish my live, I invite my friends. So my friend <coughs> receives the invite here as a notification on, on his mobile, on his iPhone. And immediately in the notification, there is also a little button here. And when you click on that button, it links you directly to the iOS store, to the App Store, where you can download the game. So you bypass the top 10, you go directly straight into the store to where your game is, and you can download the game. Now, my friend is starting to play the game. He plays the game, it's great, he likes the game. He also sends out other requests, other players see. And these friends of his may be again on a computer or on a mobile, doesn't matter. 
and the circle basically starts again. So there are different uh, tools or different channels of communication on Facebook, and it's actually totally irrelevant if your game is on, on Canvas or if your game is on, uh, on a mobile. Uh, the notifications, the news feed and timeline and the bookmarks, they will go both to the computer and to the mobile if the game is mobile enabled, i.e. if you have a game which is available both on the mobile and on Canvas. So some examples from the industry. Some successful companies, in the, uh, basically some success stories here have been uh, the Bingo Bash. Bingo Bash, these are official numbers. They, had, they, they, they saw that their experience was that the Facebook connected users, they, monet, they play 30% longer, they play 65% more sessions, but more importantly, they also spend 80% more. Similar experience also from Wooga with their Diamond Dash game. They, the, the, Facebook, the, sorry, the users who are connected with Facebook, they are eight times more likely to pay, and they spend 50% more. So these are very relevant numbers in, in this very competitive environment. And Wuga got for the Diamond Dash Mobile, they got 18.5 million uh, redirects from, from Facebook to the App Store. If you had to, sp if you had to pay uh, one euro for each, for each install, you would basically be paying 18 million. So it's quite expensive. So now I'll tell you a bit more about our plans and I'll show you something about the product. So Bubble Witch is going to be the first game. We have more than 40 million uh, installs or people who have installed the game on, on Canvas on Facebook. And from day one, all users who have an iPhone or an iPad or an iPod Touch and are accessing Facebook, they will see in the left navigation bar a link to the game, as you saw before, this link here. And there will be a little button here, and if you haven't downloaded the game and you click on it, it's going to take you directly to the App Store uh, where you can download the game. So and now I'll give you a preview of the product. So please, I'll apply again here briefly the, the, the role. If you're bored, raise your hands. Let's do a test again to wake up. Who, can you please raise your hands? Okay, not, some people are already asleep. Um, so I'll show you the, the product. This is now the mobile. This is, I, I just took the screenshots this morning from, uh, from, the, from the game, which is going to be launched soon. So, here again, when you start, you see the landscape. You don't see anymore the full landscape, but you see when you are connected, the game is going to be seamlessly fully connected to Facebook. I believe in a way which is unprecedented. So I think we have the highest level of, of, full, of full synchronization in the industry today. So let me take you through what this means. First of all, uh, the progression is fully synchronized. So when you are, I, I am, for example, level 117 on Bubble Witch Saga on my computer, when I installed the game on Facebook, sorry, on, on my iPhone this morning, I was immediately at level 117. I didn't have to start again from the beginning. Secondly, you'll find exactly the same game. So you have the same game on, on your mobile as the game you have on your PC, as the game you have on your iPad. Thirdly, and I think this is a prime, when you buy your virtual items, and these are some charms which help you in the game. So for example, this one here is the charm of precision, which when I shoot from here with a ball, I can basically see the angle at which I'm shooting at. So the charm of precision, I bought it on, on my PC, and as soon as I installed the game on my iPhone, it was available also on my iPhone. Vice versa, if I'm continuing my game on my iPhone or my iPad, and I'm buying a new charm there, is going to be available also on, uh, on the PC. It's a seamless experience. Also seamless experience, I reach now level 117, or I finish the level, I got a score, and I can see here where, where, I, where I am versus my friends, and this is updated in real time, as soon as I finish the game. And then, all, of course, all the Facebook features are all integrated. So for example, here I got a gift from uh, Malika, and, and so I can, I can reply to her and I can send her a gift back. So these are, this is a very brief overview of, of the game, and, but it, it's a bit more complicated on mobile than it is actually on, uh, on, uh, on your PC, where you have a, always a, a synchronized game or a connection. 
sometimes you don't have a connection or you don't want to connect. So we want to offer, we offer first the user before he starts the option to connect with Facebook or not to connect with Facebook. Many players don't want actually to, to connect. So we start, look, if you don't want to connect, you can also play disconnected. So Dizzy, therefore, we are providing the user also with a disconnected experience. The disconnected experience means that you are not starting at level 117, you're starting from level one. And, <clears throat> and when, you, when you see your, your scores, you see your score, but not versus your friends, but against other people who have been playing the game where we feed the score in. <clears throat> Sorry, to make the thing even a bit more complicated, there are different variables at the same time. So there are different alternatives, and you have to consider all of them when you develop a game on multiple platforms. One is, is the user or does the user want to be connected to Facebook is one. The other one, the other axis is, is the user actually online? Does he have access to data, data uh, uh, transfer or not? If the, if the user is in the underground, for example, then he, and he still wants to play, he should be able to play without being connected. So you have to consider all of this. And when you consider the axis on is he online or is he not online, uh, you have to analyze on basically uh, when do you want to synchronize what data and how much data do you want actually to synchronize. These questions are extremely relevant because when you're on a mobile, you have to consider of the difficulties of the, of the device, which or, or the limits of the device, which are on one side the, the memory, the user may be playing other games or maybe you having other applications open at the same time, and, um, and so, and so, and, and so there, there are limits. And also, in, especially in the US, data plans are, are not uh, buy or eat as much as you want. You actually pay for each megabyte you are downloading. So the other, the other uh, axis is if the user so there is a status quo, but the status quo may actually change very fast. So the user may actually decide that today he doesn't like to start with a connect, Facebook connected game, but tomorrow he changes mind. Tomorrow he says, actually, you know what? It's cool. I would like to be connected. So you have to think, okay, what do I do then if the user suddenly actually changes, ch changes his position? Now he wants to be connected, but he actually has played already 20 levels. He is now at level 117 on on Facebook on Canvas, but he has played already 20 levels. And actually, level 20 on, uh, at level 20 on his mobile, his score was higher than level 20 on the computer. What do you do? Yeah? So these are some questions you need to resolve. So one of the uh, solutions we have, for example, used here in the, at the end when you don't have any more lives and you are not connected to Facebook is we say, okay, you can immediately Continue, continue playing to get more lives, but in this case, you don't have the option to invite your friends unless you connect with Facebook. And this is one of the triggers, for example, to say to the user, now, there is an advantage in connecting to Facebook. This is the connect to Facebook button. Yeah? So either you pay 69 cents, sorry, 69, 69, 0 0.69 pounds or 69 pence, or you connect to Facebook. This is in pounds because I use it because I'm based in London, and, but if you access it, in a couple of, yeah, very soon on, uh, in the US, you will see dollars there. So again, also here, quite a lot of optimization, a lot of you know, fine tuning and, and also learning, uh, which happened before we, we, we launched the game. So we started first regarding touch controls. We had button touch controls, and then we decided that it's actually a nicer screen. It's a cleaner experience to, to have a tap anywhere to shoot instead. Uh, what did we also do? We, changed from a uh, lot of words and a cluttered screen to actually more icons, which give you a cleaner, nicer experience. We changed from this screen to this screen. Again here, again, away from, the, from words, more to icons. We also want to have a, an experience where you, are, you where we use the same icons on, on whatever, on whatever uh, device you have. Uh, and then also what we did, and the user may actually not notice this in first instance, is we changed the landscape. It was quite a bit of work, but the, the landscape looks much better in, uh, on, on, on the iPhone or iPad now than it actually was on, on the computer. And these are some of the things you find out when you, when you develop the game. So to cut a long story short, um, the proof is in the pudding. What does it mean? The proof in the pudding means that you have to taste 
the pudding to say whether it's good or not. It doesn't matter how good the pudding actually looks. What is really decisive is the taste of the pudding. What does it mean for us? I think this is actually really important. All the work you saw before, all the work we have done for porting or bringing the game to Facebook, all the work we have done for bringing the game on mobile is actually totally useless. It's totally useless. And I would not advise you to do any of this if the core game, if the gameplay of the core game is crap. Yeah, you can have 200 levels of a crap game. You can have a super social crap game. You can have the most the best multi-platform integration of a crap game is going to be a crap game. It doesn't change the world. So it's never going to fly. So I think for us, the, the essence of what we do and, and, and of our strategy is actually this, what I'm going to show you next. So we have now, and this is why the web for us is important, and this is why for some companies this applies, for some other, it, the strategy does not apply. For us this applies because we launch new games on the web. And this launch process is actually very fast and also very cheap. So we have about three people developing, sorry, two people developing a game for about three months. And so the cost is overall less than $100,000. Uh, we have now a portfolio of around 160 games. This means we can actually, we launch, we launch a new game. It's, it's really, we can be fully creative. We don't care if the game fails. Actually, it's good if it fails because we hope to learn something from there. And I think that the core of game development is actually creativity. It's not the final optimization of it. So please incite your game developers to be as creative as possible because that's when you see hits. So in our case, we do this creativity on the web and then we identify those hits. We bring those hits on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook first with a lot, a lot more work. We have there teams of eight people working on the game for six months, at least. And, and then we invest more time and more resources to bring also the game on, on all mobile devices. And we have integrated and we have built all the, all the common features on a platform where every time we launch a new game, we can integrate it there. So I hope I've given you a bit of an overview of what we are doing and do you have questions? I see a bored person over there, yes? On the web. Now we develop everything internally. We don't outsource anything. Uh, sorry, the question is, uh, how? What is the process for developing the core game? What is the process we use for developing the core game? Basically, the game we launch on the web, not the game we launch on Facebook, etc. So the first game we launch, like Bubble Witch. So, very simply. Um, we, you know, we have very good people. We give them 100% free hand. They can develop whatever they want, and, uh, and we launch it. So once it's launched, we don't improve the game anymore because it's launched in a tournament fashion, and in the tournament fashion, it's actually very difficult to change it because it's a live environment. So when you change it, then someone else can't play because you have changed the game, and it's not possible. So, but we launched so many new games that one of these games pops up and then, uh, and we have also failures, you know? I think it's important to accept failure. But when you fail fast and cheap, then it's, it's possible. And um, yeah, we develop all the games in-house. We don't develop anything, anything outside. We used to license games in the past, but we're not doing it anymore. Any other questions? Otherwise, I think we have pudding time. Thank you so much.